Hey, take a look. That's Francis Ford Coppola. He's in the wine biz, you know, and there's a lot you probably don't know, but would love to learn about wine. And perhaps if this is your year to try something new and different, not just try the wine, why not sign up for the second annual San Francisco Napa Wine Tour? Hosted by none other than our good friend Bill Mahoney, the Premier Group's wine manager, you're going to enjoy the best of what makes this wine so desired. Bill is here this morning with details to show us some of the wine. This sounds terrific and you're going in June. I'm excited. This should be spectacular. This is our second one that we've done. Uh, we're partnering this year with the travel team who has an excellent terrific. reputation for putting on mm -hmm. terrific tours. And we've worked with them before for our international cruises over to Italy and to Spain. And uh, we're keeping it domestic this time. Uh, we're going to have a fantastic excursion out to San Francisco and Napa Valley. It should be wonderful. Wow. So if you've ever wanted to go, you've been curious about wine country, but you don't have to go alone. I mean, this is going to be, uh, Bill will be narrating. He's going to be there with with you taking you to so many different incredible wine wineries correct exactly Look at this. Um, right here there's Domaine um, Carneros the great estate down in southern Napa owned by Tatinger a really famous uh, sh champagne house uh, terrific property we're going to be hitting that we're going to be hitting uh, Behringer winery uh, which is famous for their Rhine house oh, you can see right there wow. just gorgeous views gorgeous property uh, the next one we'll be visiting is Franciscan Estates. Um, most Ooh. people know Franciscan, but they also own Estancia. Maybe mm. that Estancia Meritage you've had out at restaurants. Mm -hmm. Great place. That's their tasting room. We'll be having a private VIP tasting right there. Right there is going to be Hess Collection, known for their famous artwork that they have on their property. Wonderful. Uh, so not only do they make great wine, they have terrific art to view. And then finally, we'll be going to Coppola. Uh, that's ah. the, um, the Niebaum Coppola House, one of the oldest uh, estate properties built in Napa Valley. That was built in the late 1800s. A lot of history, not only with the property itself, but you get, get to see great movie memorabilia yeah, from Coppola's yeah. property. Wow. And then, then we'll be having a terrific um, uh, prepared dinner at the Culinary Institute of America, made by their, their chefs and everything, so that should be really fantastic. And then finally, this is a highlight for me, that's the Rudd Center uh, for Wine Studies at uh -huh. the Culinary Institute, and I'll be giving a, a nice little informative seminar right there. Wow. So it should be terrific. should be great. And look, your tour includes, look at the dinners, the five private winery tours, daily breakfast, a tour of San Francisco, so you get to see that beautiful city and so much more. And Bill, this is terrific, and I know you had plenty of people who wanted to go last year, and uh, this is that time because these do fill up very quickly. They, they do, and it was a, a wonderful success. Uh, everyone was so great on the trip, and I got a number of, of great letters afterwards saying how they were so excited, and we've already got a many different repeat customers coming on on this one so it should be really good and and you know this isn't just your cookie cutter style wine tour you know you can mm -hmm. sign up for these when you go out to San Francisco and take day trips and everything this is very intensive very personalized I'm with you the entire way I'll be able to give you background information mm -hmm. keep it light if you have questions you can feel free to ask me and and this is sort of an extension of what Premier is all about we're about building relationships mm -hmm. and that's what wine's all about so when we're taking this trip you have an opportunity to ask me not only about the estates we're going to visit but about wine in general some of the other properties in the area and uh, you know it's just a, a group of friends having having a great time enjoying wine in an unpretentious sort of relaxed atmosphere. Well Bill if someone tries a wine out there that they absolutely fall in love with does Premier, Premier carry it so you can order it when you get back? Absolutely all of the five estates that we're visiting we carry. Oh, uh, what you see on screen here are some of the signature bottles that we'll be tasting at all of the estates we're going to have a couple of great, um, fantastic dinners in San Francisco at some of the most renowned restaurants where we'll be tasting some of their mid-tier property or, or lines. Uh, we'll be having um, a terrific lunch in Sonoma. Uh, not only will we have the, the city tour of San Francisco, we'll have an Alcatraz uh, tour, Ooh. we'll tour the bay. Um, there's uh, just so many things. We have show tickets the first night we get into Ooh. one of the, their, their plays in town. So it, it's just uh, chock full of exciting things to do, not only in wine country, but in the great city of San Francisco. And when is this trip going? June 2nd through the 8th. Correct. That's um, a terrific six time nights here. and seven days. Um, and there's plenty of free time, too. So you mm -hmm. don't have to feel like when you take this trip, you're mm -hmm. always going to be on the go. You know, there's, there's lots of time in the evening. Usually wineries out there close around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. So if we don't have a dinner or something going on, the, the rest of the night is yours just to relax. Boy, that sounds terrific. Now, the easiest way to do it is just email Kay Wheeler at the travel team because these are the folks who are putting together mm -hmm. all your arrangements. But once again, it's June 2nd through the 8th. If this sounds like something that's right up your alley, oh, Bill would love to have you join them. Just give them a call. And I would imagine they can even email you. Absolutely. You know, you know I'm always accessible. I'm always checking mm -hmm. my email. 
I, I work nonstop at Premier, uh, so you can always get a hold of me. And if you want some background information or, or just find out directly from me, you know, what the experience might be like, or if you've dealt with me in the past, you know that it's going to be fun. Uh, so we can just talk about it, and I can let you know what to expect and just uh, you know, give you a little bit more insight as to uh, what the trip is going to entail. Bill, do we have any idea what the price might be? Yeah, it's going to be uh, about $22.50 uh, plus air. Uh, so it's a little that's, bit, little bit more than last year. I was going to know that's actually pr for what you're getting. It's that's really pretty it's reasonable. It's really a great value because when you think of the value added to the VIP experience, right. you know, the, the the level of wine that you're going to taste is going to be far higher than what you would experience if you just made an appointment mm -hmm. on your own. Uh, you'll get a VIP experience, so you'll get a private tour, access to areas that you wouldn't have access no. to if you just uh, paid for it. And, you know, nowadays you can't even go out to these estates and get free tours, free samples. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's become sort of a business for a lot of the wineries out there because they know there is such demand that they have to sort of regulate it by charging a fee. So all those fees are, are pretty much waived because mm -hmm. if we had to charge for all of these properties, the, the cost would be so much more. So Premier is able to use its influence and its relationships with some of these properties to get the price down. And you've taken all the angst out of the trip because you're going to take people from place to place. They don't have to worry about getting a car, any of that. That's right. So um, You just show up at the airport, you sit back, you relax, and just think about all the fantastic wine, all the fantastic oh, food you're going to be able to enjoy. We have a phone call for you, Bill. Hello? Hello. Hi, go ahead, please. Hi, I'm Catherine from Kenmore. Yes, ma'am. I have a bottle of Dom Perignon uh, from 1976, and I'm afraid to open it if it's <laughs> going to be bad. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah, Dom Perignon is a Tete de Cuvée level champagne, as everyone knows, so it's, it's uh, Moet Chandon's flagship uh, bottling. Uh, they can last that long. Uh, 76 was actually a, a very spectacular vintage, better than even some in the in the late 80s. Uh, but you may um, you may want to drink that relatively soon. And storage is critical. If that's been something that's just been sitting upright for years, the chances are that it's not going to be very good. And if unfortunately, if it's been stored in your refrigerator, waiting and waiting for maybe when the bills win, um, <laughs> possibly. Don't we all have one of those? Yeah, possibly that could be. Um, pretty oxidized by now. Um, I've always mentioned to people champagne, a lot of people will keep it in their refrigerator just to make sure it's cold and ready to go at a moment's notice, but it's actually the worst place to store it because it will dry out that cork mm. and allow air to get in and it'll spoil a little bit more prematurely. So how would you keep a bottle of champagne? Store it just like regular wine in a, um, a, a dry, moderately humid um, area, maybe in your, in your basement where there's not a lot of sunlight mm -hmm. on its side so that the um, the cork will remain in contact with the wine, keeping a, a more airtight seal. I see. That's, that's the best place to, to store wine. And then just chill it down quickly. You know, it only takes about 30 minutes in a, in a bucket of icy water. Okay, so I hope you have a wonderful event coming up where you can enjoy that and pop the cork. Another phone call real quick. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, yes. Um, I enjoy my wine very much, but um, right now I am pregnant. I was just calling to see if you had any non-alcoholic wine. Absolutely. Uh, all of the premier stores have a great selection. Uh, Sutter Home Free is a great one. Uh, Inglenook makes a non-alcoholic wine. So there are a lot of choices. Um, and don't be put off. When you go to a liquor store, the non-alcoholic wines technically will have half a percent of alcohol by law. Mm -hmm. uh, we're required to have half percent to differentiate from the bottles that are sold in a supermarket, which have zero percent. But the half mm -hmm. percent is perfectly safe. I believe ice cream even has more alcohol in it than that. Okay. So yeah, you can, you can uh, choose and there's, there's plenty, of, plenty of different brands. Well, there you go. And, and if you need a little time to yourself after the baby, maybe this trip exactly. is just what you need exactly. <laughs> to start enjoying your wine again. That's terrific. And Bill, I do know that the, the catalog is out and this is still double up for a buck time. Right. We're in double up for a buck and mm -hmm. then the catalog continues um, beyond that into April. And if you want a little bit more information about this trip, it's on the inside cover okay. and uh, that'll give you some of the uh, contact is. information. And you can also, in the next coming days, be able to find more information on our website. And you should be able to find that on the travel team website very soon. All right, and let's take another call. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is Lynn. I'm calling from Orchard Park. Yes. Hi, I have a question. Um, I really don't like the taste of, like, red dry wine. I like sangria a lot, though. Is there any wines that are similar to, like, the flavor of sangria mm -hmm. that is bottled? Absolutely, and, and what you're um, needing right now is a transitional wine. Um, you're, you're right to want to experiment and try something else, but uh, you're also at the right point of palate development where your, your palate's not going to respond well to a dry tannic wine. So you have to do this in stages, and that's what our staff is really great at doing, is recommending a wine that's going to be perfect for you at this stage mm -hmm. of your palate development. So I would recommend possibly trying some wines, um, maybe like a Concord-based and other New York State wines. You could also start trying maybe some uh, Beaujolais 
Chablis style wines or Montepulciano, which are a little bit drier, but very soft and tannin and would uh, be great. But the best thing you can do is work with one of our sales associates and mm -hmm. they'll, they'll put the right bottle in you. Come hand. right in, come right in and tell them exactly that question. And exactly. They'll steer you right over to the right area. Bill, this is great. I have a feeling you are going to just sell this trip out very quickly. I hope so. It's wonderful. The second annual San Francisco Napa Wine Tour happening in June, folks, with Bill Mahoney himself, the premier group wine manager. You're gonna have a terrific time and see things you'll probably never have the opportunity to see again. So do call or log on to kwheeler at the travel travelteam.com and get your name on the list because they're going to fill up. And for more information on all of these incredible wine and spirit products, you may call Premier or visit 565-3020. You may even dial up Bill and his email at billpremiergroup.net.